So in this video, we'll take a closer look at these three thermal fan controller. So they have a temperature sensor where, of course, they can sense the temperature and then they will control the fan accordingly. And these are just some of the cheaper models I could find on AliExpress. And of course, link down in the description below if you're interested. So in this video, we'll just have a closer look and we'll try to hook up a fan and also blow some heat on the thermal sensor to see if we can get the fan move a little bit faster according to the temperature. So the first model is this one here, which have only three pin fan controller or fan header. It is sold as a PWM fan speed control module, but I don't think it actually has a PWM fan header because it's only three pin. So it does have the sense pin and plus and minus. And of course the connection here for the thermal probe, some speed indicators and also some power input. And then we have the settings key. One of the reasons why I wanted to get this one is because it does have a very long thermal sensing line or cable that also have a screw point on the end. So in theory, you could just put it inside a case. I plan to use mine inside a server case so I can monitor the hard drive temperature and then of course make my fan spin a little bit faster whenever the temperature is starting to increase. But yeah, this one has a longer thermal probe. So that's one of the things I really like with this one. And of course you need to supply 12 volt power. And there's also different lighting patterns according to the settings. It's just maybe a little bit hard to actually see here, but these are kind of the instructions. So of course you use the little button on board and then you can control the settings. And according to the lighting pattern, you can tell which setting you have selected. The second one is this one, which actually have three PWM fan headers. Does also have a dip switch and also a beeper. So I guess it could tell you if the fans are not working or maybe it, it will detect a temperature increase and it will beep. I'm not really 100% sure. And of course you can see the thermal probe there is a little bit shorter. There are also some screw points here so you can adjust something. I'm not really 100% sure as of yet what we use those for. And then you can see the instructions here for the dip switch, TP1 and TP2 and what kind of temperature you can set it to. So it starts accelerating at 35 degrees Celsius, for instance, at the top one, and full speed at 45 degrees. But you can, of course, also change that to the range of 60 to 90 degrees Celsius at max temperature. So it should be fairly easy to set and adjust. And I like this one because it does have three fan headers. So, of course, you can connect multiple fans without using a fan splitter. The last one we're going to try is this one. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the first one does have a digital button and three LEDs to tell you what settings you have selected. And then you have your thermal probe interface or thermal probe cable and the PWM header. This is a proper PWM because you see it is a four pin header. And then we have 12 volt in here, which already have cables soldered to the board. So you just need to either connect a plug in the other end or solder it to a point on your motherboard or whatever you want to connect it to as long as it gets 12 volt power input. So it's kind of the same idea with the first one and it almost looked like it's the same UI. So there are three LEDs and depending on button presses, you can set the LED to do certain things to control the fan according to the temperature, of course, but in different temperature ranges. So there's actually quite a lot of settings for this specific one, but you just need to kind of use the instructions to actually use it because all of these LED patterns, it's kind of hard to remember. So definitely do grab a screenshot or whatever of this little instruction here and keep it a safe place also for the future so you can remember what you actually did to set it up. So those are the three models we take a look at in this video. So it comes in this nice anti-static bag. Let's just break the seal and have a closer look. Inside, of course, we have the very small PCB with the three pin fan header. And then you can actually power this using the header on your motherboard. But of course, the motherboard will not be able to control the fan. This one will control it according to the temperature and also according to what you set with this little button here. And then we, of course, have the plug here for the probe itself. But this one does have the long probe, which I definitely do like. I like the fact that you can screw it in place or maybe you can just zip tie it in place inside the HDD caddy, for instance, on my server. And it's a fairly long cable. I'm not really sure if the length of this cable will also have an effect on the accuracy. But I believe the thermal probe is, of course, in the end here. I don't think it would be much of an issue. So we'll test PWM fan with this. And we'll also test standard three pin fan, which is just DC controlled and see if it can actually manage both of those types of fans. So let's just plug in power 
and see how far we can actually get without reading the instructions. So now we have 12 volt going to the PCB and you can see the LED is lighting red in the middle. And according to the instructions here, the red LED in the middle is general work. So let's just try and press the button and see what happens. And now it's flashing. Uh, okay, every time I press the button, the LED will switch to one or the other or the other one to the right and then start flashing. Uh, I think I need to read the instructions here. Ah, now it is lighting solid red. Okay, so pressing the button will increase the fan speed by 5%. Double press the button will decrease it by 5%. And if you want to get into the program mode, you need to hold the button. Let's just wait for it to stop flash. When it stops flashing, it will save the current settings and hold the button. You'll get into temperature programming mode. Yeah, you can see there. Now it is flashing 30 degrees, I believe, at the lowest settings. Okay, so one long press will get you into temperature mode. The first mode here. And one long press again, I suppose, get you into the second mode. So you can set your interval. A quick flashing. Let's just double check here. Yeah, then it will flash also and double click to change the value, long press to save. Okay, and if there's no settings for 20 seconds, then it will automatically save and exit programming mode. So there's definitely a lot of button presses you need to remember. Single press, just to increase fan speed. Double press, decrease fan speed. Long press, you'll get into programming mode. First step is the high temperature. Long press again, and then you can set the lower temperature and then, of course, the fan will raise according to the interval between the two and run at 100% at, of course, the highest temperature. But let's just try and connect the fan. First off, let's try a PWM fan, see if it will control that one. And first issue I run into is that you can actually not connect the PWM fan because PWM fan, of course, have the fourth pin and there's no room for it to connect it to on this PCB. So yeah, PWM fans definitely do not work. So you're stuck with three pin fans. So these are direct current fans, DC fans. Let's try and plug it in. And yeah, you can see it's definitely is spinning. And let's try and see if we can increase the temperature by just blowing some hot air onto the little temperature sensing probe here. Yeah, the fan definitely did spin up. So I guess it is working, but I'm not 100% sure how it is actually set up from factory. And we will just press the button one time. It should increase fan speed and double press it, should decrease it. Let's see if we can get it to stop completely. Yeah, it's definitely is slowing down now. It's completely stalled. So yeah, I guess that is working. If you want to set your default parameter, just controlling it manually. And let's just go down to the lower setting. Maybe we can just blow some hot air to it and see if it will actually start to spin. Yeah, so it needs to stop flashing here because that means it's saved its programming settings. But you see now, when I set, put some temperature on there, it will start spinning. And hopefully it should stop spinning very shortly, whenever it reaches a normal temperature again. Hmm, doesn't stop spinning again. Ah, now it stopped, okay. It does take a little bit of time before it actually stops spinning. Let's see if I can just hold it in my hand, maybe it will start spinning. Yeah, it will. And it should stop again in a few seconds. It should just cool it down by the fan itself. And yeah, it starts spinning again. So definitely it does work, but it's kind of a bummer that you cannot use a PWM fan. But other than that, kind of like this little one because it does have that long cable and you can screw it in place. Anyways, let's just move on to the next one. So this is the one I'm personally most excited about because it does have three fan headers and it does also have a beeper for whatever reason. And this one, I can see the wire actually broke off. Uh, that's a little unfortunate. I'm not really sure how useful that is. Not something I would personally use, but your mileage may vary. And then we have the very short probe. So yeah, very short, but should be fine enough for my build. And then you can see the PCB. It's nicely labeled where the beeper goes. Of course, it says beep. The other one, I suppose, is for the probe, thermal probe. And then we have three fan headers. We have 12 volt in, and we do also have a few screwable switches here and also the dip switch. Let's just try and plug it in and let's turn it on. You can see there is a LED telling you that it is turned on. Let's also try and connect the beeper and see if we can get some sound out of that. And then let's connect a PWM fan. 
And I've connected it to fan 1. I guess that's the first one you should use, of course. And let's read the instructions. And it's pretty simple. You, of course, just have the dip switch. And you can see there on the PCB, it's labeled TP1, TP2, BF1, BF2, and TFL. So if TP1 and TP2 is off, then it will accelerate the fan speed at 35 degrees Celsius and run at full speed at 45 degrees Celsius. Let's try that, actually. This hot air gun is 100 degrees Celsius. So it should definitely make the fan spin at 100%. I don't know if you can hear that, but yeah, definitely the fan just spun up there at 200%. And now it's cooling down again, so it definitely does work. That's quite nice. Let's try and connect a three pin fan and see if that also works, or if it's only PWM fans. Same test again, just some hot air. Nah, it seems to be only PWM controllable. I don't think this fan here actually changed its uh, speed. But the PWM fan definitely did so. It's running at very low RPM right now. As soon as I introduce some heat, and now the fan is running at 100% because it thinks, or the temperature just exceeded the 45 degrees Celsius. These are just the default settings, but of course, there are these different ranges you can set it to. So you can either begin in 35, 40, 50, or 60 degrees Celsius, and it can run at full speed at up to 45, 55, and 70, and 90 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if you enable BF1 or BF2, then you can have a stall alert if the fan, of course, stops spinning. Let's just try and enable that, actually. Just the two lower ones, so fan 1 and 2. If the circuit board is not detecting any RPM, then it should sound the alarm, but I'm not really sure if this alarm is working. Let's just try the buzzer for one of the other ones, because I've bought several of these. I don't think this is a common issue. Let's try and swap up the buzzer, because it should give you a sound alarm, because now it's not detecting any RPM from the fan. Or maybe the fan is supposed to be connected. Let's try that, and then just stop it manually. Yeah, I'm not hearing any alarms. Okay, I've been holding the fan for a few minutes here, and still no alarm. Not really sure what I'm doing wrong, but I cannot get it to work on this specific unit I have here. It should work when they are on both of them, if the fan stops spinning. But yeah, apparently it just does not work. But other than that, I really like this one. It's very simple. There's no like button combination you need to remember. You just need to remember these dip switches. Oh, of course, save the instructions so you can set them accordingly. So I think that is pretty easy to do. And then you can kind of dial in the fan's RPM on those two adjustable screws here. If you want the fan to run a little bit faster at the lowest temperature, you can adjust accordingly with these two screws here on fan 1 and fan 2. I believe fan 3 is not really controlled by this, but yeah, 1 and 2 is definitely controllable with temperature. So this is definitely the one I'm probably end up using because I just need two fans and this one have uh, them already built in to the little board and very easy to set and adjust according to whatever I need, instead of having like multiple button presses. Third one does have a green PCB. It also comes in anti-static bag like the two others. This one is also very simple. So of course you have pretty much the same probe as with the second one we took a look at. Very short one. Then we have of course the PCB with one single PWM fan header. So the idea I had was actually to use two of these to control the two fans I need to control in my specific system to just have them monitor the temperature two different areas of the server, and then the fans can be controlled individually according to the heat of the hard drives in either side of, of the NAS server. So that was kind of my idea with getting these ones here. Very cheap as well. Only really plug in the thermal probe one place. And then we have that annoying push button with the three LEDs. Let's just plug it in and have a closer look. So yeah, I believe it's exactly the same UI. So when the middle is lighting, it is ready. Press the button one time. You see, you see the programming mode and you will increase the fan speed. Let's just connect the fan actually. Double press, decrease the fan speed. Long press, you'll get into the temperature ranges. First one, of course, the highest temperature. So whenever it reaches that temperature, it will run at 100%. Second press, you can set the lowest temperature. And of course, in that range, the fan will just ramp up until it gets to the highest temperature and it will run at 100% when it gets to that point. And I believe one press more and you're out of that mode and you have saved your configuration. Let's just run it out of the box. See if we can get the fan to ramp up. And yeah, the fan is running at 100% now. So if you can actually hear that. So it definitely does work. And I believe the default settings is 30 degrees Celsius. Then it will start to ramp up to 100%. 
and the lowest degrees is 5 degrees Celsius. So it's a pretty easy UI whenever you kind of get used to it, but there's just a lot of light that you need to remember. And you can set the minimum and the maximum, and I really like this simplicity. The second one, where you have actual turnable control dials for the fans, the minimum RPM, so you can actually see visually where they are set at, as well as the dip switch. You can just take a quick glance and see what settings you're at. I really like that. Of course, on the two others, you need to keep these instructions somewhere you can remember, because you really need it if you want to reprogram it. It's not like you can remember that two LEDs on the left is equal to 40 degrees Celsius, and then one LED flashing on the right is equal to 20 degrees Celsius. You know, that's really impossible to remember or memorize, unless you are, of course, working with these frequently. Let's just see if we can actually get the DC fan working with this one. Just as a final test, could be useful. But I believe this is only PWM, let's just try anyways. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to change the fan's RPM. I'm not really sure if this specific fan here, because it is an ULN fan, so it's an ultra low noise fan. Right out of the box, it doesn't really have the highest RPM. I believe it's 1200 or something like that. Could be 1400 or 1600, but very low RPM. So maybe when this is running at 100%, the controller board thinks it's running at maybe 50% or something like that. Could be that, but yeah, it doesn't really seem to want to work with non-PVM fans, only really the first one there. So out of the three we took a look at here, my personal preference is the second one, and a close second to that one is the third one we took a look at, because it's just so small and tiny. So the middle one here is a little bit sizey, so could be an issue for some, but the one I am less keen on is the first one, except for that longer probe. Maybe you can use it on some of the other ones here. I think actually it, they use the same plug. So yeah, it seemed like the Thermal probe here is interchangeable, but that's definitely nice. But of course, if you're interested in either one of these, you can find a affiliate link down in the description below to AliExpress, where I got these. They did arrive pretty quickly-ish in terms of AliExpress shipping times, so I had no issues with that. But the one I'm going for, for my build, firstly, is the middle one here, and you know, the two others I can just find other projects to use on. But that's pretty much all I have for this video. I hope to see you again in a future one. Until then, Take care.